You mentioned your, your grandparents' uh, dinner, <clears throat> Sunday dinner table. Who else was it that has been significant in your early life? Who in your family, in your school teachers, in your neighborhood, who, who, who touched you? Well, well, I have to start with two people. Uh, my, my mother was one. Uh, she, you know, it's funny, my mother uh, always told us the key to this whole thing was reading. She just kept saying, the key to this is reading. You know, no matter what happens, no, 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 the key to this is reading. You just have to read. And she allowed me to read all kinds of stuff. I was reading adult books when I was still in elementary school, and she didn't care if books had curse words and stuff. She was like, no, the key is reading, right? And I say, oh, let me read that book, right, the mm -hmm. key. So this idea that the key was reading, and this is another thing. We were very poor, mm -hmm. very poor. And my parents used to tell me stuff, which I hated to hear them say it, right, because we couldn't afford stuff like haircuts. And so your hair is not cut. It's not, everybody else was laughing and teasing. My, my mother would say, it's not what's on your head. It's what's in your head. That's mm -hmm. what, and I'd be like, I don't want to hear that. Uh -huh. Can I just get a haircut? And, you know, yeah. so, and, but you know what? Years of those kinds of messages began to really seep in. And mm -hmm. it's suddenly I started, you know, saying that to myself. So that was initially, I think, what began to prepare me uh, to work hard. Uh, there were a couple of key people in my life are uh, separate uh, than this. Uh, one was a uh, young man who was growing up in the South Bronx who himself uh, had dropped out of school. And he just decided he was going to save me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. I don't know why it was me and not any of the other kids. But he just grabbed a hold of me and he said, you are not going to end up like himself. He said, you're going to go to school. You're going to be successful. And I, everybody looked up to him. His name was Mike. Everybody looked up to him. Uh, and he actually stopped me. He wouldn't let me drink. He wouldn't let me smoke, right? Now, it's not in the nice, soft way that people might think. Uh, the things he told me he would do to me, if he mm -hmm. caught me, I couldn't repeat. Uh, uh, but the idea was he decided some of us have got to get through this thing. Uh, and I've decided you're one of the ones who's going to do that. So you wouldn't see him in any of the formal education. And well, He wasn't a teacher, but he actually helped me navigate my way. Uh, through the South Bronx. Uh, and then after that, uh, there were uh, a couple of teachers who just decided that they would not accept sloppy uh, work from me. Uh, and, you know, I, I could write better than the other students. And, you know, I, the teacher would come and he'd be furious at the writing. And I said, it's the best stuff in the class. What are you? And I knew it, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, so what are you getting on my case for? Why don't you bother Paul? Look at his. And they were like, no, no, this is not. So and the, the, they really made me because I had gotten lazy simply because there was not, no competition around. They, they would not allow me. Uh, to do sloppy work or work that would not sort of stand up outside of the uh, neighborhood I was growing up in. And I think that those kinds of folk really shaped my life.